Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be a quick chat about a set of novellas that I read. The first collection of Powder Mage novellas by Brian McClellan. As the name implies, these are connected to his Powder Mage series, which is a flintlock fantasy series set in a kind of pseudo-French Revolution, pseudo-Napoleonic fantasy setting with some interesting magic systems, magic systems with rules, which I like. And this particular set of novellas collects four of the prequel novellas that deal with characters that we see in that series. A couple of them are decades before the main series, and a couple of them are basically immediately before. Actually, no, only one of them is immediately before. The Powder Mage series is interesting as a fantasy series in that it has a set of, basically a trio of main characters, each of whom's story is essentially a different subgenre. There is one character who is an investigator, and his plotline is quite a bit like a mystery fantasy hybrid. There's one character who's a general and he has political drama to that style of fantasy and then there is the son of that character who is an active member of the military and his is more of a military style fantasy mixed with a kind of traditional quest fantasy. So you have those distinct genres within the single series which I find quite appealing. So the novellas that are collected in this, I read it on the Kindle that version of which was available for $9.99 Canadian, which is very reasonable. I think on Brian McClellan's website you can buy actual hard copies of this, some of which are signed and get kind of expensive for a novella collection, but if you're a huge fan, I don't know why I'm advertising it. Never mind that. The first novella in this collection I would say is the weakest. It's called Forsworn, and it is basically the backstory of wife slash mother of the father-son characters that I mentioned from the main series. It is interesting from a lore perspective because it's talking about how powder mages are perceived in one of the other nations and because that's a newer style of magic there's some political and social meaning behind that and we get to see a bit of the background for that but it's not particularly compelling beyond that it is about this character trying to bring someone across the border so it's a bit of an adventure story but it's not particularly compelling except in that it is the backstory of this character who is attached to the main characters. So as an introduction, I don't think it works. As a side story, it is a franchise product more than it is a good solid story on its own, but as a franchise product, it's fine. The second novella in this collection is called Servant of the Crown, and it is about Tomas, who in the main series is this high-ranking military leader. At this point in the series he is he's younger, he's been brought up by the ranks, there's some class drama. It reminded me a little bit of Bernard Cornwall's Sharp series where Sharp is always not a proper officer and all of that, but with added magic. And I've always thought Sharp but with added magic is a fun idea for a series, so I quite enjoyed that story. And if that character was your favorite character in the Maid series, I think it's pretty entertaining. On its own, I don't think it would work on its own outside of the series because so much of it is based on knowing what the magic divisions are in the world because there is a political drama and possible assassinations happening in the background and I think without knowing the information from the main series that wouldn't make sense. That said, as a prequel, having already read the main series, very entertaining. I would say that the best novella in this collection was probably Murder at the Kinnan Hotel, which is centered on the younger version of the inspector main character from the main series and it is an investigation and it works as a whodunit and it also works as part of the series. I would say that that is possibly that along with the the final one are probably the ones that stand up the most on their own. In terms of lore I would say there's somewhat less of that versus some of the other stories in this collection but I did enjoy seeing the younger version of that character and how he fit in or not with his fellow investigators. So I was entertained by that one. And the final story in this collection is Ghosts of the Tristan Basin. This is about the character Taniel, who is the younger character in the main series. And as with his story in the main series, it is basically military fantasy. It is about defending a city from a siege and how that plays out. It's very straightforward. I think it even though it plays with the lore, I think it stands on its own as a piece of military fantasy, so if you were lending this to somebody who wanted to see if they would enjoy the rest of the series, I think both that and the murder one work pretty well on their own. I don't think the first two work on their own, and so I would say those are definitely lore building pieces to read after you've read the main series, but as a whole I thought the collection was pretty entertaining, and yeah, it served as a good reminder that I still haven't 
caught up with this other series. I thought these four novellas were entertaining. Uh, as I said, I don't think the first two work on their own, but at the same time, how many people really do read them on their own? I actually did see a Goodreads review that was from someone who hadn't read the main series, and it was the lowest of the reviews. So I think that probably tells you who the audience is. I think if you are the target market, you'll probably be entertained with at least half of them and probably enjoy the lore bits in the rest. That was how I felt about them anyway. If you've read these, I'd love to hear what you thought of them. If you've read any of the other novellas in this series, uh, because I did read something about honor. There's one with honor in the title. I don't remember. I'll, I'll write it down below. I read that and I, it wasn't super memorable, but I think it was reasonably entertaining. Was that one about Flora? It might have been. I don't remember now. In any case, if you read any of them, I'd love to hear what you thought. And if you thought they were in line or equal in quality with the main series. Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.